Welcome to Chalk Walks. In this case, we have a six-year-old male castrated Yorkshire Terrier, about three kilograms. And his history is several months of pruritus. Uh, and he currently is presenting with sores on his back. Referring veterinarian had used the long-acting depot preparation called uh, methylprednisolone acetate, glucocorticoid. And it generally um, lasts for somewhere between two and 14 days. The acetate uh, added to the methylprednisolone and given as a subcutaneous um, injection leads to a depot release of the glucocorticoid. Um, dog was also treated with unknown antimicrobials. The, this treatment, presumably due to the uh, glucocorticoid therapy, show it was resulted in temporary improvement, but as soon as the therapy was withdrawn, um, there would be recurrence within several days. Uh, the dog was also treated with topical chlorhexidine shampoo. Chlorhexidine is a biguanide um, cationic shampoo that is particularly good for topical use. It it's, uh, d disrupts cell membranes uh, and disrupts the respiration of bacterial uh, cell contents and is particularly good for Staph aureus. The dog was also tried in a variety of diets um, uh, that, for instance, Hill's DD diet and science diet, grain-free venison with the presum presumption that perhaps there was a component of a dietary allergy. Um, th it's not clear whether this helped or not. Uh, the dog was also on routine um, flea and tick preventative, uh, fipronil and uh, S-methoprene, which is known as frontline. Uh, and when the dog presented to us, we saw erythema and crusting on the pinna and loss of about 70% of the hair coat on the dorsum with crusting, hyperpigmentation. And the dog was, this is significant, the dog was uh, felt to be uh, suffering from, on a scale of 10, 9.5 on the paritis scale. So the diagnostics in this case that were done were included skin scraping, as you do in any, any paritic case, and what they found and felt like was probably a normal uh, population, if you're representative of a normal population of demodex, would be uh, one de fragment of a demodex um, uh, Parasite, uh, ear cytology showed occasional yeast, uh, and and the dorsum, chin, perineum, when those are scraped, uh, showed numerous neutrophils and mild to moderate cocci and rods on the chin. So the diagnosis was crusting dermatitis with focal lip pyoderma, and the etiological um, rule-outs were felt to be pemphigus, and other possible immune-mediated diseases and less likely nutritional disease. They do believe they had ruled out um, there's a small pop possibility of uh, sarcoptes, but this was ruled, felt to be pretty much ruled out by what was done so far. Let's now take a look at what the treatment plan uh, was in this case. Um, first of all, the because of recent glucocorticoids, this was the um, methylprednisolone acetate. While weaning this is not necessary uh, because it actually tapers off on its own, um, it, the animal, it was felt that a true diagnosis, uh, histological diagnosis, would not be possible until the glucocorticoid effect was uh, was gone. So they wanted to wait an additional two weeks um, and then use some treatments that would help maybe alleviate pruritus in this dog. Uh, and the following was used for that purpose. Uh, chlorhexidine pads. Um, again, we mentioned chlorhexidine as a um, as an antiseptic uh, cleanser. And then oclacitinib or Apoquel, which is the trade name, 
which is a very interesting new class of drugs that um, is felt to be inhibitor. So let's, let's actually talk a little bit about this. So this drug is an inhibitor of what are known as Janus kinase or Jack kinases and specifically one and three. So that's these are the um, particular kinases that are inhibitory of pyridogenic and pro-inflammatory cytokines. So by inhibiting these, you then reduce um, pyritic and pro-inflammatory cytokines. such as IL-1, I'm sorry, IL-2, 4, 6, 13, and 31. And this is a new drug that was developed um, with this target, specific target of managing pruritus. So let's, let's make a note of that. So the goal is to reduce pruritus, and this drug has been a recent addition for this purpose. Now it's significant that this drug does not does not block uh, JAK2 kinase. JAK2, uh, because this is uh, this kinase is associated with the hematopoietic system and and generally the innate immunity systems. So you don't get generalized, so this is not an effect, um, not an effect of this drug. So therefore, unlike what you'd see with glucocorticoids or other immunosuppressants, you don't get, um, which, which can suppress pruritus, but it will not uh, necessarily, will also suppress the immune system, and this drug uh, does not have that effect. Another drug that was used in this case was myconazole, and myconazole is an imidazole antifungal drug, and this uh, acts by inhibiting uh, ergosterol synthesis in the fungal membrane. Uh, and how does it do this? Basically, this uh, synthesis of this steroid is a P450 system, and uh, basically it's a C14 demethylase, and it's also known as CYP51A. And so by blocking this, it prevents the ability of the hydroxylation of methyl sterols, and therefore it disrupts not only um, the fungus and its ability to make these crucial steroids for the fungal membrane, but it also can have effects on cholesterol uh, steroid and steroid hormones as well. And the other drug uh, that was used was celamectin. Celamectin is also known as Revolution. And celamectin is basically a compound that disrupts the parasitic um, nervous system from many different types of parasites and that's why they're effective against uh, for heartworm disease for uh, adult fleas mites and sarcoptes ticks, sarcoptes as well as ticks, and roundworms and hookworms. So the plan for this dog was to return it in two weeks for a skin biopsy. So now let's take a look at what the biopsy results showed, and the results were highly suggestive of pemphigus foliaceus, so an autoimmune uh, disease, and that's how this dog is being treated, an autoimmune skin disease. Uh, 
And so what is the basis of that? Well, we come back to this for, for many years. The, the, the absolute basis were glucocorticoids. So this dog received 1.6 milligrams per kilogram of prednisolone uh, every 24 hours. And that part's a little bit unusual. It, this type of dose, immunosuppressant dose, might be given every uh, 12 hours as well. Um, and this is uh, this was prednisolone as a glucocorticoid is very active against the cell mediated immunity uh, mechanisms that are somehow deciding that uh, the skin and its uh, dermis dermis of this animal is foreign and therefore um, pemphigus foliaceus results in the the, the destruction of the um, dermal membrane. The other drug that was used is cyclosporin, and cyclosporin is um, considered to be, it's a calcineurin inhibitor, and its effects uh, as an anti-immune um, drug, an immunosuppressant drug, is to inhibit the early T-cell activation. and to dec decrease interleukin-2. And we remember we mentioned interleukin-2 is um, being crucial to the uh, association of w which normally would lead to T-cell proliferation. So that's why this drug is particularly effective, um, particularly in combination with glucocorticoids, at redu reducing the, the T cell proliferation and reducing, let's make it, make it clear that this is a reduction. Uh, so we're reducing this, and then we're also reducing the tendency for the generation of um, cytotoxic lymphocytes. So the combination of these two drugs becomes our focus, um, and we have to understand that treating immune-mediated disease is it, you're in it for the long haul. So um, you have to be concerned about the uh, use of the glucocorticoids and its ability to suppress the uh, adrenal axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. But that concern, you know, comes much later and after you see the animal. Uh, recover. So one of the things you're going to be doing as monitoring of this animal um, is to uh, recheck and basically do a lesion check and and also evaluate the primary problem which is the pruritus. So hopefully we'd see the pruritus score go down. Of course, we'd also want to be monitoring for the effects of the drugs that we're administering. So you'd probably do a biochemistry, um, particularly looking for the liver enzymes and also uh, renal function. Cyclosporin is known to be uh, in hepatotoxic and nephrotoxic in humans, not generally an issue in dogs, um, more commonly as adverse effects are vomiting, diarrhea, and anorexia, so GI effects. Now, what we also may want to do because of the variability and absorption of the product uh, cyclospore and atopica is a trade name commonly used, uh, is to do therapeutic drug monitoring for cyclosporin. And particularly as you get into higher dosages, uh, it's not an issue so much for avoiding toxicity as it is to ensure that you're giving an adequate um, amount of the drug. Uh, each animal can have quite significant differences in bioavailability or GI absorption. Uh, but it, and it's variable, uh, generally reported between 23 and 45 percent. So what is done, whole blood is best, um, is to monitor for trough levels. 
And what you generally want is so trough um, blood levels are drawn, um, blood sample, meaning just before you administer the drug. And your goal is to achieve uh, cyclosporin concentration at the trough of greater than um, 500 nanogram per mil. This is what you generally submit is best done with whole blood and pay attention to whether you have an assay that is specific to cyclosporin itself or to one of its, uh, it also includes other bioactive metabolites. Generally a lab that does this assay should be able to tell you about that. Um, so the primary reason is patient variation. Uh, peak concentrations are, are predictive of uh, clinical effects, but therefore that's why we're looking for uh, trough concentrations that are above a certain level. Um, and it's not so much an issue of toxicity that we're avoiding, but trying to optimize the cost associated with administering what amounts to being a very expensive drug.